this episode is gonna be different. I'll not focus on a specific team or player, the narrative will be different, and I'm going to talk more freely. But what is the topic of the episode? The Europa League is regarded today as the second best competition in Europe, the little brother to the Champions League, the competition which teams try to avoid in order to not play a match on Thursday, just two or three days before the league matches. The competition that every big team sees as merely a ticket to the Champions League. But when we dig deep within the history of the competition, we'll notice something weird. There is a before and after. Before the expansion of the Champions League in the 97-98 season and after the expansion. This made me research the topic further and ask a simple question. Are, for example, Sevilla's recent titles on the same level as the titles of Inter, Liverpool or Juve in the 70s, 80s and 90s? And another question. Is there a season where the UEFA Cup was on par or exceeded the Champions League in terms of strength of competition? In order to prove this theory, I did some extensive research on the history of both the Champions League and UEFA Cup. My goal in the beginning was simple, to restore some of the prestige back to the UEFA Cup and to the champions of this competition, especially in the period before the expansion of the Champions League. But after digging deeper into the research and the findings, I've ended up with a much more broad and important study. A study that could give you a new way of looking into the past and present. A new way of analyzing each season in the European competitions in a balanced way. But first, let me lay some groundwork with some important history lessons. The UEFA Cup was introduced back in the 71-72 season as a substitute to the Intercities Fair Cup, which was not recognized by UEFA. And a rule called One City, One Team was also abandoned. That rule was used by the English League on each of their European participants. For example, if Arsenal finished second in the local league and Tottenham in third and Liverpool in fourth position, only Arsenal and Liverpool get to qualify to the UEFA Cup because only one participant can represent the city of London. But after pressure from UEFA, that rule was finally abandoned in 1975. And because the European Cup at that time only allowed the champions of each European league, along with the holders of the tournament, the UEFA Cup hosted the rest of the European teams depending on their coefficients. So in another way, it was like the Champions League today, but without the league champions. There is also a third competition called the European Cup Winners' Cup, which hosted the domestic cup winners from the European leagues. It was considered the second best competition at that time, evident by the fact that the UEFA Super Cup used to be contested between the holder of the European Cup and the holder of the Cup Winners' Cup. But with the Champions League expansion in the 97-98 season, the competition became weaker. So much that in 98, Ajax were Dutch Cup winners and Eindhoven were runners-up. But both of them qualified to the Champions League the following season because of the new expansion. So the club who qualified to the Cup Winners' Cup were Heren Wien, who won a semi-final playoff in the Dutch Cup. So the competition was officially abandoned after the 98-99 season. UEFA has done many different expansions to the Champions League. The first expansion came in the 97-98 season, when the top eight European leagues based on coefficient were given two tickets for the champions and the runners-up. In the 99-2000 season, there was another expansion, and the top three European leagues based on coefficient had four teams qualify to the Champions League, the same top four spots that clubs fight for today. And because of that, I initially stopped the study before the first expansion in the 96-97 season. But what was the methodology, and how can I compare different tournaments in entirely different seasons? I'm sure everyone is aware of the UEFA club coefficients. The European Federation uses it today to determine the ranking of each European club based on their results in the past five seasons in Europe. And based on that coefficient, the four pots are populated to determine the sequence within the group stage draw. In the past and up to the 99 season, calculating the coefficient was simple. 
Two points for a win, one point for a draw, and a bonus point for each round passed after the first round. And the points were the same whether it's the Champions League or the UEFA Cup. Let's use the example of Ajax Amsterdam in the 71-72 season. Ajax played nine matches in the European Cup. They won in seven and drawn in two. Seven times two and two times one, that's 16 points plus three bonus points for getting past the round of 16, quarterfinals, and the semis. That means that Ajax in the 71-72 season accumulated 19 points. But there is an additional step. We take the total points and divide them by the number of European matches played by Ajax. So 19 divided by 9, and the final result is 2.1. Of course, this is not the final coefficient. You'll have to take the sum of five past seasons, which means adding the 2.1 with the past seasons, which are shown here. And the result is 7.34. Let's call this figure the UCR, and specifically UCR for the year 1972. So in the beginning, I thought that in order to compare a season to another, or to compare the European Cup to the UEFA Cup, why not take the total UCR of all participants within a single season and simply compare them to others? So let's try it out. Let's take the 72-73 season. I want to calculate the total UCR of each participant within the European Cup. I'll rephrase. That means I want to calculate the performance of each team based on their results in the last five European seasons. In order to limit the amount of clubs within the calculation, I took a decision to only calculate the clubs that got to the round of 16, which is considered the second round in the early competitions. So back to the example, the 72-73 season. These are the teams that got to the round of 16, and this is their UCR next to them. We'll call the total UCR of all clubs the tournament UCR, which is in this case 71.44. So let's now calculate the tournament UCR of the UEFA Cup from the same season. These are the participants, and those are their UCRs. And the total is 45.01. That means that on paper, the strength of the competition in the European Cup was better than the UEFA Cup in the 72-73 season. I calculated the same formula in each European season up to 1997 before the expansion and before they changed the formula for the UEFA club coefficients. I come back to the same question. Is it really possible that there is a season where the UEFA Cup is on par or even better than the European Cup in terms of strength of competition? This happened two times out of a total of 26 seasons. The first example was in the 79-80 season. Nottingham Forest were the champions of Europe for the second time in a row. The tournament UCR was 52.91. On the other side, the UEFA Cup of that same season, which was won by Eintracht Frankfurt, had a tournament UCR of 58.41. Let's dig deeper on why the formula gave us this result. When we look at the participants of the European Cup that season, we notice that the Holders Forest had a fairly low UCR because of their almost non-existent European experience. It was only their second ever season in this competition. The French champions Strasbourg were just promoted from the second division two seasons ago and also had poor experience in European competitions. The main factor that made the UEFA Cup superior in this season was the number of West German participants within the competition. Five strong West German clubs were participating, while the West German league was considered the best in Europe at that time based on UEFA's league coefficient. What is the second example in which the UEFA Cup surpassed the European Cup? The 84-85 season. The European champions were Juve and Platini's men, and the final was infamous because of the Heisel disaster. The tournament UCR was 61.63. On the other hand, the UEFA Cup was won by Real Madrid for the first time in their history, and it had a superior tournament UCR of 66.59. What affected the European Cup UCR was the inclusion of a new Soviet Union champion, Dnipro, who were newly promoted back in 81 and didn't have any prior experience in Europe. The West Germans didn't have a participant after Stuttgart crashed out of the first round, and despite including Liverpool, Benfica, Gothenburg, and Juve. The participants within the UEFA Cup were much better on paper. Real Madrid, 
Internazionale, Spurs, United, Hamburg, and the better Soviet Union representative, Spartak Moscow. And this is the main point. Because the European Cup only allowed league champions and the holders to participate, it's only natural that with the inclusion of new champions like Dnipro and Strasbourg, for example, you'd have a weaker tournament on paper. And when we compare the tournament UCR across all seasons and rank them together, we'll notice that the 84-85 UEFA Cup won by Madrid is ranked above 10 European Cup campaigns. But I was still not entirely convinced in the UCR. Is it really a good measure of the strength of a team? Because in the end, the UCR only calculates the team's performance within the European competitions. And what if I wanted to extend the study to seasons after 97 and wanted to prove other theories like what is the hardest triumph in both the European Cup and the UEFA Cup? To achieve this, I had to create a new and accurate formula. I believe that the performance of any club within a span of five years is a good measure of a club's strength. And this is why I like the UEFA coefficients in the beginning. But because the coefficient was focused on European performances, I needed another plan. And that's why I created the LPR formula. The LPR uses the last five positions of a club in their local league and links them to a point system. Each position is assigned a certain amount of points. First gets 25 points, second 18, third 15, and etc. And the LPR also takes into account the strength of the league based on the UEFA league coefficients. Let's use the 84-85 European Cup as an example. Based on the LPR formula, Juve accumulated 111 points from their previous five seasons in the Italian league. And the breakdown looks like this. Runners up in the 79-80 season, and that's 18 points. 80-81 season, they were champions, so that's 25 points. The following season was the same, and runners up in 82-83, and then finally champions in 83-84. When we add these points, we'll get a final figure of 111. Let's look at the Swiss club Grasshopper, who also accumulated 111 points from their previous five seasons in the Swiss league. Runners up in two seasons in a row, then champions in three seasons in a row. That means that Juve and Grasshopper had the same points, but we all know that Juve and Grasshopper were not at the same level. But how can we prove that? The LPR formula takes into account the strength of the league by using the UEFA League coefficient ranking. The UEFA League ranking is an indicator that is calculated yearly by the European Federation to determine the number of slots each league can have based on the points their respective clubs accumulate in European competitions. This coefficient gives us a good indicator of the European League rankings throughout any point in history. Let's use the same example. This is the official ranking of the best European leagues in 1984 based on the UEFA League coefficient. Their five season totals are shown as well. In this example, the Italian League was in fifth position, while the Swiss League was in 15th. When we divide the Italian league coefficient by the sum of all league coefficients, we'll get a weight for that specific league. The same was done for all leagues as well. This weight is then multiplied by Juve's and Grasshopper's points which we calculated previously. Juve's 111 points multiplied by the Italian league weight which was 5.24% and the result is 5.82. Grasshopper also had 111 points multiplied by the Swiss league weight, which was 3.02% and the result is 3.36. Now the difference makes more sense and the result is called the LPR. This formula also gives me the chance to extend the study to the 2021 season. Let's take a more recent example for the LPR, the 2005 Champions League campaign. I need to calculate the tournament LPR. First, I need to sum all the LPRs of the clubs that got to the round of 16. Let's look at the champions Liverpool first. Before participating in this competition, the Reds had these positions in the last five seasons in the Premier League. Their total points based on our points system we previously mentioned is 67 points. The 67 points is then multiplied by the weight of the English League in 2004, which is 6.85%, and the LPR equals 4.59. This is the LPR for the rest of the clubs in the round of 16, and their total, which is called the tournament LPR, is 81.91.
And because there were no round of 16s in both the 97 and 98 season, I calculated the average LPR for the tournament just to make sure that I compare apples to apples with any tournament going forward. In this case, the average tournament LPR was 5.12. This exercise was done for all European Cup and UEFA Cup competitions from 1972 until 2021. That means that I inputted all league positions for each European team from 1971 until 2021. It was a lot of work, but I sincerely hope that the results are worth it. All the results that will be shown from now on will be through the LPR. Let's demonstrate first the top 5 strongest Champions League seasons based on the LPR formula. In 5th position, the 2019-2020 season in the Champions League. The tournament LPR was 86.1 and the average LPR was 5.38 per club. The weakest club of the bunch based on LPR was Atalanta, who proved themselves very worthy. And this is the ranking of all participants based on LPR. In fourth position, the 2018-2019 Champions League season. The tournament LPR was 86.4 and the average 5.39 per participant. The fact that the weakest team based on LPR was Ajax Amsterdam means that this is truly a strong season in Champions League history. Of course, Ajax got all the way to the semi-finals and were very close to getting to the final, but Lucas and Spurs had other ideas. Get another chance, Lucas Moura! In third position, the 2009-2010 Champions League season. The tournament LPR was 86.6 and the average 5.41 per club. The English league was the strongest in Europe based on UEFA's rankings and they had three strong representatives in the round of 16. Even the improved Russian league had Siska Moscow as their representative, who caused some issues for future champions Inter in the quarterfinals. Bordeaux, who were considered as one of the weakest teams in the competition, topped their group which contained Bayern and Juve. Fiorentina, who was considered the weakest team between the 16 clubs, also topped their group which contained Lyon and Liverpool. There were no weaklings in this competition, and this is why it deserves its place in third. In second position, the 2016-2017 Champions League season. The tournament LPR was 87.5 and the average 5.47 per club. The Spanish league was the strongest and by a big margin based on UEFA's league rankings. And they had four strong representatives in the round of 16. Leicester was considered the weakest team despite topping a group which contained Porto and managed to surpass Europa League holder Sevilla in a tense round of 16 fixture. It's saved again by Schmeichel! The second weakest team based on LPR was Monaco, who got all the way to the semi-finals, beating Manchester City and Dortmund. Falcao away! Oui! And six of the best German and English teams completed the competition. In first position, and the strongest campaign in the history of the Champions League, was the 2010-2011 season. The tournament LPR was 90.2, which is quite a gap from second, and the average LPR 5.64 per club. Both the English and Spanish leagues were the best in Europe, and they had seven representatives in the round of 16. Spurs were the weakest team in this round, but they managed to win against to be Serie A champions Milan and got to the quarterfinals. Crouch! Yes! Even the rest of the teams at the bottom of the rankings, like Marseille, Schalke, and Shakhtar, had strong results. Schalke won by seven goals to three after two matches against Holders Inter. And Shakhtar won by six goals to two after two matches against Roma. Douglas Costa! And Marseille made life difficult for United in the round of 16. In essence, there was no weak team in this competition, and this is why it's considered the strongest in history based on LPR. When we look at the top five list, we notice that all of them came after the expansion, and all came after 2009. The reason could be that the biggest clubs kept getting bigger and the gap was extended from other mid-table teams, and the same clubs were being repeated each year. Now let's look at the other side. 
the five weakest seasons in Champions League history based on LPR. The fifth weakest tournament in history was the 95-96 Champions League season. The tournament LPR was 54.6 and the average 3.41 per club. Juve lifted their second title in the Champions League and was considered the strongest team and by quite the margin based on LPR. Just a reminder, this was in a time where only league champions and the holders can qualify. Dortmund were German champions, Blackburn who had zero experience in Europe were English champions and their only representative. The French league which was considered the second strongest league in Europe had Notts as their representative a team that qualified to their first Champions League since 1983. The fourth weakest Champions League campaign in history was the 84-85 season. The tournament LPR was 53.2 and the average 3.3 per club. It's a big coincidence that Juve's two titles were won in the fifth and fourth weakest competitions, but let's see why. Just like I mentioned in the beginning of the episode, this season saw the UEFA Cup surpassing the European Cup based on UCR and the same is true with LPR. The strongest sides in the tournament were both Juve and Liverpool who competed in the final, but other than them and Portuguese side Benfica, the rest of the competition was pretty weak. There was not a single German or Spanish club in the round of 16 and there was a club called Linfield from Northern Ireland which is considered the fourth weakest league in Europe at that time. The third weakest Champions League campaign in history was the 82-83 season. The tournament LPR was 53.1 and the average LPR was 3.32 per club. Hamburg were the champions for the first time in their history and Hamburg were considered one of the best teams in Europe at that time. Juve who lost in the final were also up there. The English league had two strong representatives in the holders Aston Villa and Liverpool who were dominating locally. So why is this featured in our list? Well, basically the rest of the competition in the round of 16 were unusually weak. An Albanian and Finnish side featured in this round, a Polish, Greek and Romanian sides whom represented some of the weakest leagues in Europe sealed the fate of this campaign as the third weakest in Champions League history. The second weakest campaign in Champions League history was the 78-79 season. The tournament LPR was 50.6 and the average 3.16 per club. Nottingham Forest won their first European Cup in exceptional circumstances. Forest were English champions the season before after being newly promoted from the second division. That's why their LPR was low. The tournament was weak for other reasons as well. The German league was the strongest in Europe and their representative was Köln, who just became German champions for only their second time in history and had minimal experience in Europe. And both the Belgian and the Italian leagues, whom were considered one of the best leagues in Europe, failed to have a representative in the round of 16. And based on LPR, the weakest campaign in Champions League history was in the following year, the 79-80 season. The tournament LPR was 48.3 and the average LPR 3.02 per club. The tournament which was won by Nottingham Forest again, the feat that will never be repeated. John McGovern, Nottingham Forest, European champions. Both the Belgian and Italian leagues failed to have a representative for the second season running. The Cyprus League, considered one of the weakest leagues in Europe, had a representative called Ammonia. And as mentioned earlier in the episode, Strasbourg were new French champions and had almost zero experience playing in Europe. Add to that a club from Denmark, Romania and Ireland and the result is the weakest tournament in Champions League history. What's surprising is that when you rank all the European competitions in history based on LPR, so both the Champions League and UEFA Cup slash Europa League, you'll notice that the 79-80 European Cup is ranked under 21 UEFA Cup campaigns. That's a big and surprising number. And maybe it could be the answer I was searching for in the beginning of the study. But does it mean that Forrest's achievement is considered below the achievements of the clubs that won the UEFA Cup and are ranked above the English club? Absolutely not. And this is the final part of the study, a way of measuring the difficulty of the achievement. I introduce to you the ODR formula. 
The goal of the ODR formula is to calculate the degree of difficulty of winning the Champions League or the UEFA Cup and to compare them across all seasons throughout history. The formula doesn't give any added weight to the Champions League over its sister competition. Each achievement is calculated equally. And the main sources of data for this formula are the strength of competition through the average tournament LPR, the strength of the champion through the champion's LPR, and the difficulty of the path through what I call the average path LPR, which I will explain shortly in detail. And calculating the formula is simple. We take the average tournament LPR plus 10 minus the champion's LPR plus the average path LPR. Why did we subtract 10 from the champion's LPR in the formula? This way I'm rewarding the weaker teams. In other words, the weaker the champion is and the lower their LPR, the higher the output. The result in the end is added to the average path LPR, which in other words means the average LPR of all the clubs that the champions has faced starting from the round of 16. Let's take an example. The 79-80 season, which we ranked as the weakest European Cup campaign in history based on LPR. The average tournament LPR is 3.02, plus 10 minus the champion's LPR, which means the LPR of Forest, which equals 10 minus 2.73, and that's 7.27. Now we get the average path LPR, which is the average LPR of all the teams that Forest has faced in this competition. In the round of 16, Romanian side RJ Spetisti, 0.88. In the quarterfinals, East German side BFC Dynamo, 3.64. In the semifinals, Dutch side Ajax Amsterdam, 6.4. And in the final, West German side Hamburg, 5.61. Their total is 16.53 and the average 4.13 per club. Now back to the formula. When we add all the sources of data, the result will be 14.42, which we'll call the ODR or the overall difficulty rating. When I show some other examples later on, you'll have a better understanding of this figure. But initially, 14.42 is considered very high and is ranked as one of the most difficult wins in Champions League and UEFA Cup history. That means that ranking this season as the weakest in Champions League history doesn't degrade Nottingham's achievement because of the high ODR we got. Or in other words, Forrest's achievement in this week tournament, given that they were huge underdogs and given that they surpassed strong opposition, is considered a fantastic and hard achievement. Let's use another example to add more context to this rating. The 2007-2008 Champions League season won by Manchester United. The average tournament LPR was 5.26, which is considered the 10th strongest in Champions League history. 10 minus the Champions LPR, which is United's LPR in this season, that's 10 minus 6.97, and the result 3.03. Based on that figure, United was considered one of the favorites for the competition. The average path LPR, after United surpassed Lyon, Roma, Barcelona, and Chelsea in the final, was 6.42. And when we add all of them up, the ODR is 14.71. That means that despite the strength of the tournament, the ODR was similar to Nottingham's ODR in 1980, because the formula also rewards the weaker champions. Let's look at some results. The top five hardest triumphs in European competition history. In fifth position, the triumph of Yugoslavian side Red Star Belgrade in the 91 European Cup. The average tournament LPR was 4.76, which is ranked 18th in history. The champion's LPR, which is Red Star's LPR, was 3.68, which is ranked 44th between all European Cup champions in history which is considered one of the weakest champions that lifted the European Cup. The average path LPR was 5.04 after they faced Rangers, Dinamo Dresden, Bayern München, and Marseille in the final. And the result is an ODR of 16.11. Red Star were one of the underdogs of the tournament when we compared them with the other clubs in the round of 16. But they had a great squad, Mihailovic, Savicevic, and the 91 European Golden Boot winner, Darko Panchev. And despite their limited experience in Europe, the Yugoslavian side won against big clubs on their way to the title. Rangers, a tough semi-final match against Bayern, 
and the final against French side Marseille were spending on players like crazy Abidi Bilay, Chris Waddell and the Frenchman Jean-Pierre Papin. Unfortunately, after Red Star won the final through a penalty shootout, the team quickly was taken apart just as Yugoslavia was going into war and several players from the special group transferred to the biggest clubs in Europe. In fourth position, the triumph of Porto in the 2004 Champions League season. The average tournament LPR was 4.69, which is ranked 20th between all European competitions in history. The Champions LPR, which is the LPR of Porto, was 4.04, which is ranked 42nd between all Champions League champions in history. Just like Red Star, they are considered one of the weakest champions in the history of the competition. The average path LPR was 5.54 after they surpassed United, Lyon, Deportivo La Coruña, and Monaco in the final. And the ODR is 16.19. After the Portuguese side won the UEFA Cup in 2003, Porto dreamt of lifting the Champions League trophy, and the dream became a reality under the tutelage of manager Jose Mourinho and players like Deco, Carvalho, and striker Benny McCarthy. Passing the round of 16 in the dying minutes against one of the favorites United was the turning point of the season. It's been turned in by Costinha. And their path to the title was difficult, as after passing United, Porto won against Lyon and Deportivo. The Spanish side had just won against Juve and Milan. Then Porto faced Monaco in the final, the side that won against Madrid and Chelsea in the final round. But despite that, Porto played one of their easiest matches of the season in that final, winning 3-0 against Monaco. Porto are the champions of Europe! In third position, Ajax's triumph in the 94-95 Champions League. The average tournament LPR was 4.45, which is ranked in 22nd position between all European competitions in history. The Champions LPR, which is Ajax's LPR, was 4.03, which is ranked 43rd between all champions in Champions League history. Only one position away from Porto and are also considered one of the weakest champions in history. The average path LPR was 5.94 after Ajax got out of a group containing Milan, Salzburg and Athens. The Yugoslavian side Hajduk split in the quarterfinals, Bayern in the semis and Milan in the final. And the result is an ODR of 16.36. Ajax were neither underdogs nor favorites in this competition, just about average when compared to other clubs. The team contained club graduates from Ajax's academy in almost every position, with a couple of veterans like Reichardt, who signed from Milan in 93. Their manager Louis van Gaal managed to mix Cruyff's tactics with the physicality and tactical discipline in which the young Dutch manager was known for. And after a big win against Bayern in the semis, winning by five goals to two, Ajax overcame the giants of Milan in the final, the team which was dominant in Europe for six consecutive years. And Ajax are considered the team which ended that chapter of dominance in a tough final. In second position, Chelsea's triumph in the 2021 Champions League. The average tournament LPR was 5.29, which is ranked in ninth position between all European competitions in history. The Champions LPR, which is Chelsea's LPR, was 4.62, which is ranked 37th between all champions in Champions League history, basically average in terms of historic champions. The average path LPR was 6.46, after they passed Atletico Madrid, Porto, Madrid, and City in the final considered one of the most difficult paths in history based on the formula. And the result is an ODR of 17.13. Despite the huge spending in the summer before the season, Chelsea started their campaign in poor form as pressure started to pile up on club legend and young manager Frank Lampard. So in January, he was replaced with the German manager Thomas Tuchel, who managed to solidify the defense and strengthen the team's tactics. Chelsea were not one of the favorites for the Champions League, but despite that, the team passed the tests of Atletico and Porto with great defensive displays, followed by a huge win against Madrid in the semis, which gave Chelsea the confidence boost they needed before the final, as Tuchel surpassed Guardiola and City tactically, just as he has done in the FA Cup semi-finals, and came out victors with a 1-0 scoreline. 
In first position, and the toughest triumph in all European competitions history based on the ODR formula, was Liverpool's Champions League win in 2019. The average tournament LPR was 5.39, which is ranked in fourth position between all European competitions in history. The Champions LPR, which is Liverpool's LPR, was 3.57, which is ranked 45th between all champions in Champions League history. The average path LPR was 6.31 after they passed Bayern München, Porto, Barcelona and Tottenham in the final. It is also considered one of the most difficult paths in history based on the formula. And the result is an ODR of 18.13. The formula gave us this result for a few reasons. First, this is considered the fourth strongest tournament in history. Second, Liverpool was not the team we know of today. They struggled to get a top four position in the last few seasons at that time and their highest position coming in the 2013-14 season when they came in second. And based on LPR, they were not favorites for the title despite getting all the way to the final in the season before. And their path to the final is considered one of the toughest in history. A big win against the German champions, then the Portuguese champions, then a historic remontada against the Spanish champions without some key players in the team. Then finally a tactical win against Spurs, the team that knocked out Dortmund, City and Ajax. When we look at the top 5 triumphs we mentioned, we notice that all of them were in the Champions League. But the achievement which came in 6th position was in the UEFA Cup. Which means that the 6th toughest triumph in the history of the European competitions was Spurs' UEFA Cup triumph in the 84 season. The average tournament LPR was 2.82, which is ranked 80th between all European competitions in history. The Champions LPR, which was Spurs' LPR, was 1.43, which is ranked 48th between UEFA Cup champions in history and ranked 98th between all European competition champions in history, so both UEFA Cup and Champions League. Basically, in other words, they are the third weakest European champions in history. The average path LPR was 4.68 after they passed Bayern München, Austria Vienne, Heidog Split, and then Anderlecht in the final. All those teams were superior to Spurs based on the LPR formula, and Anderlecht were also the holders of the competition, and the result is an ODR of 16.07. What made this achievement sit in sixth position was Spurs' relative weakness at that time. They were promoted back up in 1978 and didn't get back to the top four until the 82 and also 83 season. But under the tutelage of manager Keith Birkinshaw, they gained great experience in last year's Cup Winners' Cup competition in 83. And with names like Glenn Hoddle, Steve Archibald and Ray Clements, the team successfully passed a tough Bayern side in the round of 16 and a win against Hajduk split the Yugoslavian side in the semi-finals. And finally a win after a penalty shootout in the final, which was played at White Hart Lane, the perfect venue for this great achievement. In the end, the study proved the theory I presented at the beginning, that there are triumphs within the UEFA Cup that are on par with some achievements in the Champions League, which are worthy of respect and admiration. But because of the name of the competition, it has become forgotten to the casual football fan. I hope this study gave you a new perspective towards the history of European football, and I hope you enjoyed the episode, despite it being very different from the usual.